Another guy I know speaks English, and clearly, and even though he knows a lot of big words, probably one of the best SEC chairmen this uh, country has ever had. Harvey Pitt joining us right now. Harvey, I was thinking of you because I see the president meeting with the business roundtable, and the common lament you hear from these business guys, many of whom are going back and forth with the president, not so much on taxes, but on rules and regulations on the SEC and others, watching every everything they do, uh, uh, assuming guilt before innocence. And then I was thinking of Mark Cuban and his battles with the SEC. And he was saying that left to the SEC, he would all but be in jail. I'm paraphrasing here that he doesn't think that these various agencies, specifically SEC, have done businessmen and women any good. What do you think? Well, I think there are some legitimate concerns about the uh, unduly heavy reliance on regulation. Every time there's a problem, the first instinct in government seems to be, let's throw another rule of regulation at it. In the SEC's case, they have been compelled to adopt uh, over a hundred rules by Dodd-Frank, which may go down in history as one of the worst pieces of legislation uh, ever per, uh, conceived by the Congress. So there are difficulties, but a lot of them have been imposed by Congress on the regulatory agencies. No, no, that's a very good point. I, I didn't want to bash your old haunt. I mean, you ran it and then revolutionized it, so I didn't want to make you think you wasted your time. I apologize if I gave that appearance. But, but Harvey, the one thing that comes up, uh, you know, Congress proposes and then it's up to the SEC to follow up and, and do the things that it's been asked to do. That I understand. But do you think over the last years it's gotten a little too zealous? Because you mentioned Dodd-Frank, you mentioned this financial law, and ignorance is not a defense for CEOs from the very high up to the very low, from the big companies to the small companies, that ignorance of some of the facets of this law, which are very complicated, to give the health care law a run for its money, is no defense uh, when, when, you're, when you're dragged before the SEC. Well, I think you're uh, absolutely right, Neil, but um, my concern here is that it doesn't really matter what the SEC does or doesn't do because they'll be criticized. Yes. And in a sense, that buttresses your point, because if you know you're going to be criticized no matter what you do or don't do, do what you think is the right thing. No, don't but not do all of them do. Is... Now that we've had that period where a lot of them were caught watching porn and all of that. Now, that was a select few, and not everybody. It took a while to fire some people. Some are still on the job. But I guess what I'm asking you is whether that hinders things, because these are the type of issues that come up at a business roundtable meeting, sometimes even more than the tax rate or whether it's going to be raised more, whether deductions are going to be limited to effectively raising taxes more. It's that kind of stuff. Does that surprise you? No, it, it's not surprising. And I tell you, when I, I came in, my thought was government is a service industry. You're supposed to be serving the people. You're not supposed to be um, uh, basically dictating to them uh, unless there's a, a valid reason for doing so. And so one of the concerns is there has to be an opportunity for businesses and others who are affected by these regulations to have the kind of meaning full input before these rules get adopted. That's something that's absolutely crucial and it is required by law, but it is often adhered to only in a technical sense. That is very well put. The idea of, it, of serving, and that is all of government. And it feels the other way around these days. Harvey, great seeing you again. Thank you very, very much. Good being with you.